They might have a burn, it could be an infection. We're setting that rule so that child doesn't go through that pain. Yes. I know it's possible to feel like a stranger in a room full of people, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. Be a stranger with your family. It, it happens. I'll admit, as my dad's side of the family, I didn't see a lot growing up. I always felt like a stranger because I didn't know them. I wasn't close to them. But the perspective of that servant is... I am his servant, and I do not belong in this earth. I am passing through. I am temporal. This isn't my home. And he says, hide not thy commandments from me. Again, is God hiding his commandments from us? No. No. He's told us what he wants. Now, this is the Old Testament, so they know that they're going by you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. They're going by the books of the law. So this author is familiar with it. He says, hide not thy commandments from me. Is God hiding? Again, it's the cry of the servant saying, change me, keep me, so that those things that I don't see, I can see. There's a difference between God hiding and us not seeing. Uh, yesterday, uh, Kaylee was running through the house, and uh, she was playing hide-and-seek with her sisters, her sister and her brother. And um, I run into the room, and there she is as plain as day, laying on the side of the bed right near the door, pillow over her face. I can't see you, you can't see me. So of course we proceeded to tickle her. But that's the imagery I think of is, are you really hiding or you just got a pillow over your face to obscure your view? And that's what this, the servant is saying here. The author of this section is, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments. Show me those things that I have to do. How do I respond, Lord? And then he says in verse 20, My soul breaketh for longing that it hath unto thy judgment at all times. That word breaketh means consumed. My soul is consumed by the longing of thy judgments. My soul desires so much that I feel like I am burning inside with desire. That's, that's the imagery. We, you know, on Wednesday I mentioned as the, as the heart panteth after that water. When you're thirsty and nothing is going to quench that thirst. Or if you worked all day or if you've been raking leaves all day. For me, it's the, at the bottom of the hill, everything goes down there. And at the end, it's like, oh, I could really use a glass of ice water. And I know it's just going 30 feet, but it's like, oh, I'm so tired from the day. i got to walk up the hill and then onto the porch and then take my shoes off. And then I, I'm going to have to make sure that I brush the dust off before I go into the kitchen because I don't want to dirty the kitchen. Nice. And the water is so <laughs> far away. It, it, it feels so far away, but it's right there that immediate longing that nothing is going to quench it. He says, that's where my soul longeth unto thy judgment at all times. My soul desires to have proper response to your judgments. You know, I 
I also, maybe it's just me, but I read into it a little bit about that battle. It's his soul that longeth, isn't it? The flesh doesn't always long for the commandments, does it? The flesh is enmity, it's war, it's that separation. It's my soul wants to do what's right, but mm, me not so much. The body doesn't. Because thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err for the commandments. Who likes being rebuked for anything? Mm -mm. Let alone in a crowd of people, right? We were talking at work, and uh, one of the things came up, and I said, look, if I ever have to talk to you about something, I'm going to do it in private. Because no one wants to be talked at in public like that, do they? Because we all have, haven't we? And some point or another. Rebuke's not a good thing, is it? So it doesn't, to me, it kind of, why is he throwing it in here? <clears throat> he's talking about himself. He's talking about his servant. He's talking about, remove the blindness from my eyes. He's talking about, I'm a stranger in a land. He's talking about his soul burning. And he's saying, thou hast rebuked the proud. I cursory glance, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't fit the flavor until you realize why is there rebuke. Why would the judge rebuke you? Why would God rebuke you when he could just destroy you if that's the kind of God that we have? Yeah, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's easy. You know when there's a cop with this, there is going to get you? Got the radar? We feel better when we get that warning, don't we? Yeah. That gentle rebuke? Yeah. Is that speeding ticket? <clears throat> Slippery slope? But that speeding ticket is designed to prevent you from doing those behaviors again. Okay. Yes. It's designed to be a monetary punishment so that you stop doing what you were doing. Right. Right. That rebuke of that Lord, the, the Lord, is to give them warning. Yes. It's not that all of a sudden, God who has provided, God who is there, He doesn't take a sharp left turn and being a judge. He's saying, you're rebuking these things. You're providing ample opportunity to turn away from these sins. That I might have a proper response to you. That I might be in right relationship. You're pointing out those sins in my life that need to be put away. Yes. Rebuke's yes. still not fun, is it? No. no. And then he continues, remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. So, I don't know. It reads kind of weird, doesn't it? Remove from me reproach or contempt, because I have kept thy testimonies. He's saying is, I have kept thy testimonies, so I deserve to have these things removed from my life? Sounds it, doesn't it? But that's contrary to the principles, isn't it? We don't deserve anything. It's only God's grace. First of all, what's reproach? Disappointment. Disapproval. Dislike. What about contempt? Ugh. Ugh. Beneath consideration. Worthless. Rebel scum. <coughs> Just, ugh. Contempt. Now, is he saying others have this toward him? Because in the Psalms, it's pretty clear a lot of times is my enemies have compassed about me. They have done this to me. But he's saying remove from me reproach. Take that disapproval and disappointment and feeling of contempt to others as worthless. Remove them from me. Sounds more like self-righteousness, doesn't it? It sounds like godliness of a sort, which isn't godliness. It sounds like I'm keeping thy commandments, so I'm better than everyone else. And the people who aren't keeping thy commandments are rebel scum. And I can just completely ignore them. 
See, the servant keeps asking for things to be removed from his life so that he can draw closer to God. And he says, remove that contempt I have. Remove that reproach. Remove those things from my life that makes me think because I followed your way and your testimonies. Take that out of my life so that I am not judgmental of the other people. See, step six is receiving, and I know it's old testimony, so the Holy <coughs> Ghost isn't there yet, but that's the birth step where you become part of the family, isn't it? Right? We know him. We recognize we are him. We seek him. We seek what he wants from our life. We get the remission of sins. So we have right relationship with him, right relationship with others. And then he dwells in us so that we can be part of the family. You know, it's really t hard to be a part of the family when you think because you do things right that other people aren't worth anything. That other people's struggles that they might have that you don't have, that they're worth less than you, until you realize the struggles they have, you're failing horribly in your life. Do you really want to start judging people? Do you really want to start airing dirty laundry? Absolutely not. Remove that from me. Take that away from me. I want to have the life and nature of God within us. Yes, and like Pastor said this morning, it says, cast the first stone. Did anybody? No. It's a go. Sins be forgiven. We can't forgive sins, but we can treat other people yes. the way he would have. That's right. And we have to. Princes also did sit and speak against me. Everything seems great until the world starts trying to call us out, isn't it? You know, and the worst part is when they try and call us out, most of the time they're actually calling out things that we do have to get rid of. Yeah. And the princes are the powers of this world. And they did sit and speak. That sitting is almost like a judge's seat. They sat in power, they sat in that authority, and they spoke against me. But, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. See, the powers of this world want to push against me. They want to say what I'm doing is wrong so that they feel like their way is correct. They want to redefine terms. It's no longer a crime if it's not considered a crime. It's no longer wrong if it's not considered wrong. How dare you be a remnant that remembers what God actually wants? How dare you <coughs> speak things as they are? Don't you know we're all supposed to just change our wording so that everything's hunky-dory and we're to pretend life is grand? No. He said, thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. It wasn't Monday at 5 o'clock or 5 o'clock every day he sat down and read his Bible and did his bread program. And I'm not saying don't do it. Do that. I'm not saying 5 o'clock, that's your schedule, that's your problem. <laughs> but get into his word, but it's meditate. Which means to keep his commandments in our mind at all times. To think on it. Almost like and I'm going to use this because the dogs did it this morning, I think at like 6 a.m., is just gnawing on that bone, just gnawing and gnawing and gnawing. And it's a nylon bone. What are you getting out of it? But they're still gnawing because they're, they're used to gnawing on bones to get something out of it, to get the marrow out of it, to get nutrition out of it, to get sustenance out of it, to gnaw on his word, to meditate on it. Okay. Because the battle's won in our minds. Yes. They can destroy our bodies. No one can make you do anything. Not yet. Give robotics some time. But, but even... <laughs> because thy testimonies are also are my delight and my counselors. It takes a long time for his testimonies to become our delight, doesn't it? Because our ways are not his ways. Sometimes it takes many 
many, many beatings and circumstances for us to get in line with his thinking, doesn't it? Yes. And even then we want to revert back to what we like. Mm -hmm. But that servant has got to that point where his testimonies are his delight, his enjoyment, but also the testimony are his counselors. That's more than just meditating on it. That means any decision that that servant's making, he's going to his counselors. Is this the right decision? Is your testimonies are my counsel. When I have to make a decision on something, Lord, I'm going to your ways in seeing how I should respond. I want to have your joy. I want your guidance in my life. I'm not happy with just remaining, just existing. I want to draw closer to you. And that's what I was saying at the beginning, that very first verse is, my servant, deal bountifully with thy servant. This isn't a new person coming in the door. This is someone who's already the servant saying, Lord, I need more of you to live. Remove those things in our lives. It's very easy to get very comfortable in places we shouldn't be comfortable with. I think of um, Wanyu Pichu in Peru. There's Machu Picchu and then there's a mountain that's about a thousand feet up called Wanyu Picchu. And they have two temples that they climb up. One of them is, I'm not going to say a straight path, but it's almost vertical up. That's a tough climb. The one that's worse though is when they put holes in the side of the mountain with boards and rocks where you're just going from step to step to step to go to the back of the mountain for the other temple they had. But it's just <clears throat> whatever that ledge is. There's no railings. It's just you go, you go. You're going to have 20 seconds of regret and then it's not going to bother you. You don't know where you are. Don't get comfortable sitting on that precipice. That's not the destination. It's very easy to get comfortable where we are. That's good. It is. But we can't. We have to keep reminding ourselves that it's always going back to who he is and who I am not. And then we have to make that choice that we are either going to follow his way or our way. And it has to become part of our lives. We have to meditate on it. Yes. And the fruit of it is it has to become that counsel that guards, guides our life. If you know something about God and what he wants and you're not doing it, then you don't know it. Because if you see him and you know him, that change is going to come. So... This is only the third letter, and the eight principles have been in each one, hasn't it? So far. I'm not thinking that's going to change. So, I guess we should get used to having some uh, eight principle lessons from, for Sunday school adult class going out. But please don't dismiss it. It is our foundational knowledge here, but it's foundation we got to make sure it's solid. we got to make sure it's built. we got to make sure it's up to par. You know, there's a lot of people in Connecticut who thought their foundations were fantastic mm -hmm. and it had the wrong stone in it. Yep, yep, yep. Now, there was one over, between, I think, off of Catherine, cutting between the mall and Brainerd Road. Did you see what had to happen there? They had to disconnect everything. Iron joist and lift the whole house. Right. And they had to gut out the entire foundation. That's right. Yeah. Stafford Springs too. They Stafford Springs, Springs, all over the yeah. state. And I know from our insurance companies there was a lot of issues going on with the P and C companies. But I can tell you this is let's not get comfortable with the foundation. They thought they had sure, sure foundations. They thought they had houses that were worth something. Yes. And when they found out they had those things, those houses were worthless. You couldn't flip them. Mm, right, yeah. You couldn't get rid of them. I'm pretty sure if you turned the key into the bank to walk away, they wouldn't take the key. Yeah. Not beneficial. Our house is the same way. Our house isn't worth anything. 
unless that foundation is sure and firm. Yes. Yes. I'm done talking. Lord Don Pulver, can I ask you to play a, a closing for this uh, lesson today? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord. We ask the Lord Jesus that we look upon ourselves, Lord, through this. And look to you, Lord, for our strength and our guidance, Lord. Uh, to always look to you for in your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, we praise and glorify you, Lord. Amen. 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 You're all dismissed. Can you grab the board members?